Hello and welcome to Learn Digital Design. If you've already seen our previous videos then you're in the right spot. If not then you can go back and view them on our website. And if you already know everything about the basics of Inkscape then you certainly can skip ahead to some of the more advanced design techniques. Okay well today we're gonna look at to start with the circle tool. Now click over here on the left hand side and you can press F5 for that as well and go out here into the middle of our workspace and let's draw a circle. Now it may just appear to be just a circle but there are several things we can do with a circle. Uh, for one we can of course uh, squash it, you know, move it around however we want. We can adjust the width and height just like we can with a square. Also we have this uh, circular node over here just like we do with a square. Look at that. It looks like a piece of pie. We can uh, we can this, we can make an arc, not just a circle. And I'm going to use this opportunity now that we have the circle tool pulled up, and you can see how to make an arc, which is pretty simple. Let's talk a little bit more about the uh, Select and Transform tool, F1 here. Something we haven't covered before. Obviously, you know, we can squash these images in any way we want. We can, we can adjust them. This is normal, just like most programs. But uh, click on the image again in the center somewhere. Now look what we've got. The uh, nodes here on the edge have changed. Let's make it a little bit more wide so you can tell what's going on here. the nodes have changed alright well let's grab one and see what happens we can rotate not only can we rotate we can skew some of this is better demonstrated with a rectangle let's grab one real quick See how the ski works? Now let's say that we want to resize this, but we want it to remain in its original proportions. See here we can adjust it in all kinds of ways. But what if we want to have it be more rigid and retain its original proportions? Look up here next to where the width and height are in between them. You're going to see this little lock uh, here. And if you click that, it's going to close. And that's going to signify that this object is locked. You can op you can uh, grab the same thing here. And as you can see, it, regained, it retains its original proportions. And I use this all the time. This is one of those things that makes it so that you're not necessarily going to have to worry constantly about the size of some of your images. Very nice tool to have. Now, since we have a little bit of time left in this tutorial, let's cover some of these other objects here on the toolbar that might uh, you might not use a lot, but are nice to know that you have. We have a Create 3D Boxes tool. And this is a very weird and interesting tool. And I'm going to show you just the basics of what it does and then I'm gonna leave it up to you to play with this tool and kinda of figure out how you can use it because it's gonna be just so specific on when and how you're gonna use this but basically you can create a little 3D box here you can move it around just like any other object and uh, it's got a few the selectors on this are a little bit different so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of depth on the 3D boxes here. A really cool one we have here is uh, Create Stars and Polygons tool. Now, look at this star that we created here. You can choose how many corners you want this star to have. If you just want a simple five pointed star, you can make it a polygon or a star. 
uh, you can choose how rounded you want it to be. This will be a cool way of creating some gears or something. So we can throw another one in there. Rotate it a little bit. And now all of a sudden we have these gears that interconnect with each other. Isn't that cool? Uh, randomized. This is going to kind of make it more random. Uh, I don't know what kind of use you'll find out of this, but it's there if you want it to try to use it. Uh, so feel free. Okay, I've got my basic star back here, and if you grab this inner node here, you can do some really wicked stuff with it. So, this is something to keep in mind, this tool. I mean, there's definitely some uses for it. They're going to be more specific than most of the tools, and you're not going to use it as often, but hey, it's there if you need it, and it's good to know. And finally, we're going to wrap up real quickly with this tutorial with the spiral tool. Let's grab it here on the left, F9, and let's create a spiral here in the middle of our workspace. And up here at the top, there's some pretty neat things you can do. You can decide on how many turns you want there to be in your spiral. You can decide on the divergence, which will be the distance between the turns. And the inner radius which is where it starts creating the spiral. This is a pretty cool tool. So, once again, kind of like the star tool, you might not use it as often, but it's nice to have there in your toolbar. It's something to use. So, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial.